What's happening, everyone? Okay, let's get back to this. First one didn't go too well. This, for some reason, the camera switch didn't switch the audio on when I tried to, so I had to restart it. So, got it all figured out now, and we are ready to rock and roll on a Thursday night. A new feed. Hope everyone had a good week. Got more things dialed in. Like I posted yesterday, I got a new camera up above, which is cool. And I can actually zoom in now. Um, got rid of the uh, GoPro. Just worked good for what it was, but with all the other cameras, just too much in the mix. So, we're going to go on this project, and the project we're going to be doing is going to be this little guy here. We're going to do this crow. This is actually the new camera. I already got it cut out, and this is kind of the project here. Yeah, we'll just lay that up. But this new camera is cool because now we can get. What's cool about this? I can zoom in. Should we get a nice clear shot of the airbrush now? Which that's that's much better than the GoPro, I think. I'm gonna zoom that back out. And for those who might not have saw the video earlier, so this was the iPad uh, <coughs> thing I showed on an earlier feed. So what I did is I just brought this photo in, got this photo online, put it on its own layer. I'm gonna, this is Procreate, and then I'm going to drop the opacity down and do this so it's easier to kind of draw and not get distracted by all the different details because I just want to get some of the baseline. I create a new layer, and that's the layer I'm going to draw on. And then I just go in and, oops, cancel. Now I go in, and this is where I start doing all the little details and stuff like that. So all the pencil work is done in there. And that's how I kind of identify how I'm going to do my cuts and stuff like that. So that's a little quick tip on that. And then we end up with this, and I did some vector swirls here. This is from some past projects that uh, me and Rhino did at the Airbrush Rendezvous. Uh, different projects, I've used it on some bikes, I've used it, different variations of the whole set that I got a long time ago. And it comes real handy. So what I did is I have this gray panel. And this was Autoborn Sealer, black mixed with a little bit of gray. I mean, back to a little bit of white to make this kind of dark gray. And uh, then I just cut out these swirls, laid them on. So they're going to stay in the foreground. So when we're done, this will have, you know, these will be up front, and then the, the crow will be behind it, and it'll create a really good layering effect. Okie doke. So we have our first cut here. And what I did with this cut is, let's see if I have, this one kind of has the photo mixed. You can see the mix, two to mix together. So what I did this time is I cut out where kind of the brightest area is going to go and i'm going to be able to silhouette background i did a secondary cut for the black because i can actually use some black because this is gray and this will just get me started so you can see how i just i cut out the bold shapes leaving the rest for freehand and design things like that you know you can see from the back side they just cut out and a couple things you know so i can fold them out you know simple easy and clean and then we'll use some texture templates and some things like that. Pocket graphics, we'll throw all that in. But first, we're going to get some background. I want to do like a bright red glow behind it. So it really kind of pushes pushes that uh, that depth. It kind of sets them apart. Let's bring a picture in picture here because we're fancy. What is everyone doing tonight? Anything new and exciting for anyone? Someone's from Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke, Quebec. Quebec. Hi. How you doing, man? I haven't been up to Quebec in a while. Last time I was there, I was teaching a class with Patrick Brienne. Definitely want to get back up there and do some classes. All right, so what I'm doing now first is going to be an opaque red. Uh, this is illustration color, illustration opaques. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do fire. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to give like a red. Just a red, like kind of rim light. I didn't reduce this much because I want like that coverage. You know, see how that's showing up? And then I'll use scarlet red after. I might put a little white in it as well, maybe towards the end, just to give it some glow. You know, maybe we'll do. <coughs> we'll do a little. You know, I'm gonna use. 
my glue template texture swirls because that's going to kind of go cool with the um, with the background swirl that's already there. And it'll enhance it a little bit. It'll be kind of cool, I think. Now, these I've made, we talked about it last program, this is hot glue. If you don't have one like that, if you want to achieve this look and this kind of effect, you can take, like Gerald Mendes texture effects, and as you spray, you move, okay? So, you know, if you spray through, you get that. But if you spray and move, you get that same texture. See, you can mess around, it's a fun technique. Probably might use it for doing some of the fur too, because you can you can give it you can give it some nice effects. So it's a nice little quick tip for you guys. And we're gonna give this guy red eyes. So we'll set them up there. Why are you gotta make them creepy? What's that? Why you gotta make them creepy? Not creepy. It, why you gotta well, creep the eyes are reflecting the red light from around the area. Okay. See? Cool. So yeah, that gives a nice little start. Now we'll start getting into the detail. Details. So. You know, I have a photo reference in front of me. Um, I'll bring this down and I can look at just so I can figure things out as I go. So we're gonna start with, you know, the highlighting of the nose bridge and some of this detail. And I'm gonna put the white in, but I'm not gonna put it in too hard. It's just gonna be lightly, lightly done. So, now you could just like flood in some white, the whole thing, um, which I'm actually not using white. I'm using, which was the color here? I am using Illustration Neutral Gray 7. So this is the um, off of the Air Oil and Lead line from Steve Gibson. This is you know, one of the neutral grays because then I can go back in and highlight with an actual pure white. So now in case you wonder why the tape was on there. I mix up and paint ahead of time. It's been in the gun. I practice it to keep things from drying out. Put tape over the vent cap, that vent hole, and your paint will be it won't dry because you can't get air changing over. So make sure we're flowing good. I have this fairly heavily reduced because I want this very light, and I want to build my tones as I go. So I put maybe 10%, 40, 50 into my colors, which is the gloss. Or you could use 4030 because I'm not going to do too much erasing and I want a harder a harder paint because it's a hard surface. And then I probably have this reduced. Usually you want to use 5% to 10%. I probably got about 20 to 30 because I'm doing out of a micron for one and I want very fine, you know, I want to build slow. So like I said, you could go in and just flood the whole thing or you could do it light and just kind of check it. Or you can use this time, you look at your photo reference, and you just kind of start building some things. And my brush is tailing a little bit. You know, the little tail just wasn't sitting quite right. I'm just gonna spin the needle. You can pull the needle around, make sure it's seated good. There we go. And just check it. Easy peasy. But I'm really just trying to do the light registration of stuff. And I'm not over flooding the template. I don't want to even paint most of the edge. You know, I'm just, just trying to get it set up. I'm going to put a little texture in here where I know there's some lines. See it just starting to kind of build it out. I'm coming to here. Um. 
and say just enough to kind of show it see just my registration that looks way wider on screen than it does in person um, it's pretty it's pretty dim you know I'm gonna use this time to kind of zoom in oh I got both feeds on the same one so I'm gonna swap that there you go and we'll zoom this guy in up in the core so you can kind of see both happening at once cool so I got some little cuts here and I cut this out so I can register in the kind of just the side of the head there kind of thing just a little doesn't need to be perfect this is really just a sketch it's just kind of getting it roughed in and now we've got the feathers down here simple just rough registration nothing crazy and then here I'm gonna get the head See that? Now that's enough to really just start and get my bearings. And we'll kind of figure out the shape. It's really light. Going up here to the head. Looking at my photo. These feathers here. I know the shoulder is lit over here. And then you know, eventually I'm gonna rim light all this all this vector work that I plotted out um, using the uh, green mask, and this will kind of have a red glow to it as well, so it'll really it really pop. So what's new? Anyone uh, working on anything fun, new, and exciting? Okay. So now this is done. So we go in. Now I'll start doing some feather strokes. Just kind of work them in now. Soften this out. I might actually reduce this paint a little more. Well, you take the other half of the tone foot. edge to it see that just kind of pops it off still getting a little tail out of this brush and I cleaned it pretty well but I don't I might not have seat seat of the needle right this is the blessing and the curse of the microns amazing detail work great but they are finicky yeah, you're dealing, with, especially with white. You know, I usually tend not to run white through the micron much because uh, someone put up a post earlier on one of the other pages for why does white clog so much, and it's mainly because it's rock. <laughs> it's titanium dioxide, and that oh, pigment. From Columbia. Thank you for checking in from Columbia, sir. You know, white has pigment, basically a little rock. And it's ground down, it can only be ground down so far. And so that's why whites or opaques, or colors like that, tend to give you the most trouble because as pigment settles, it can, it, can, uh, it can get stuck in your fluid nozzle and just cause a needle not to seat back right. 
and all sorts of things like that. So, you know, the Microns take a lot more work to play with than other brushes like, you know, the CH or the HPC Plus, which is what I use mostly. But you can see, you know, I can just get in here for hours, really, if you want, and just do little feathers. Um, you know, we're not going to make this photorealistic in two hours by any means. So we're just going to have a little fun with it. And we can actually take these, this and... See those little feather lines? Let me see if I can... Yeah. Let me kind of come right... I'm going to come down here and do it. Now, so watch, watch right here. I want to do it and move. So you get those little feather-like lines. And I'm moving this, I'm not just moving the stencil, I'm moving the brush and the stencil together to create that look. Um, what do you like to use for material that you can cut? So for that my... You can cut on the plotter that stands up to the urethane paint. Well, this is what I use here. This is all the FBS line. Um, so whether it's FBS Gold Mask, which the FBS Gold, FBS Gold Mask is paper-like material, which is this, but they make it in a plottable form. Super thin, uh, it's semi-transparent, you can see through it, holds up to water-based solvent, lacquers, anything you want. Uh, the second one is their Blue Mask, which is, used to be called Love Blue, and now it's, you know, Blue Mask. That is one of the most flexible and thinnest vinyl masks on the, on the market. So you can stretch it over anything. It's thinner than any other mask from any other companies. Uh, so super low profile. So when you build a lot of paint and candy on it, you don't get a thick, thick edge. And then we have this mask now, which is the green mask, which is arriving soon. So everyone, you should be seeing it soon. It's coming on boat. And nice about this stuff, it's as thin as the blue. Sticks like the blue, stretchy, super nice. Uh, and it's transparent you can see through it so that always works the best for me um, if you don't have x to fbs or you want to get something local i've always had the best luck with avery mask you know or you know 3m or gerber their mask you can get at most vinyl supply stores and then from coast airbrush you can get the there i think it's i think it's sharp line they call it, um, well, like general formulation. There's a lot of masking. The only ones I don't ever recommend for solvent is Oracal. Oracal masks, the white one especially, the clear gray works okay. The, um, but <clears throat> the white and I think, and they're yellow. If you get that with solvent clear that's still outgassing, like you cleared the bike the day before, put the mask on it, it'll suck the glue right off it in most cases. So I typically stay away from uh, Oracal or or Mass. There's a few different brands like it. I took Avery Gerber 3M or the other ones I would use that's available in most suppliers. But um, for the specialty stuff and the really high detail stuff, nothing beats the FBS line. Hope that answered your question. Mr. Leahy, how are you doing, sir? Good to see you. Thank you for popping in. Work this some more. Go back to some feathers. And just see that little bit. Just kind of work through. And it's just enough. Oops. Get a little too wet. If your stencil gets too wet on the back side, you'll start leaking paint through it. But I'm just working a little bit. Same thing here. Let's get in here. Yeah, I'm gonna black most of this stuff out, so it doesn't have to be crazy perfect. That's kind of not what we're doing here. It'll just be a fun painting. Wipe the shoulder. 
And the reason I painted this kind of that light gray was so I could get this nice pop. You know, and I could work back and forth with the gray, uh, with the black, and you can see it, as opposed to starting on a black panel. Now, the other thing you can do is we can try some racing and see what that looks like, because that'll erase back down to that color, you know, the base color. Yep. So see, now I can come in and, you know, you can do all these nice little You know, you can just get nice little detail lines in here. You know, especially like around the eye if you want. See? So that's the opposite of like doing the highlights. When you erase on a white panel or a white color panel, you get highlights. You erase on this, you can get some darker lines. And then you can go in with the pencil eraser as well. And so see in the beak, you know, we can put in some lines. Yeah, so now I can go in, you can hit those lines. So you're racing for a different method this time. You're not going for highlights, you're racing for like black line texture. See, another cool little way to do it. So I can go a little bit to the mouth here and I can put little details in now if I want. Some of you might see, some of you won't. Cool, cool. Said, I'm just gonna fog in a little bit more. He looks pretty white right now. Now I'm gonna go in with the dark color. Don't ask what eraser that is. So this is the new Awada Medea eraser. It electric eraser comes with two different size nozzles. Comes with a two. Uh, I think it's a. 0.25 or three millimeter racer then you can pull this out and put the standard um, five mil larger racers in there and it's USB rechargeable which is awesome so you never chance for batteries and I think this was the third week I've used it um, I'd say yeah so. this is the third week and I haven't recharged it yet so lasts a long time really good power great device um, anywhere that sells Iwata should be selling these uh, Co should have them in stock already, uh, or will have them very shortly. If Dave or any of our coast is on here, or if Laura, if you're still on, let me know. If these are available at places like Coast, I believe they are. Uh, we will be using these at the Ever Chart Circus in my class, because when we do the Lumalor project, um, which Lumalor will be donating a panel for everyone. The cool thing about using the eraser on a Lumilor panel is because it's light, it'll let the light come through the line, so it's it's even different to work with. Which is why I use the Lumilor panels in class, because it's, it's another surface to kind of learn how to paint on. And it comes in really handy with the masking and stuff like that. Let's see how that just, just edge that without doing the black. And then you can soften it up later. I'm going to go back and forth in here. And just keep messing with it. Like I said, you can mess with it as much as you want. Um, someone said Coast better have it. They took my money. <laughs> yeah, didn't Dave come in here and just send a link to it? I think I think Dave put a link up last time. Yeah, no, two, I think it was two streams ago. Two streams ago. He came in, drop, he came in, plugged his company in the back. No, but. No, he did that, yeah. actually. Mm, that would be funny. So now this is this is the, the darker panel. Um, so I'm gonna use this to kind of carve in some of the dark detail and keep some lines crisp. But again, notice how light I'm spraying. I'm not doing a lot. And see if that little bit just Can you erase H O K? Yes. And yes. That so the, the, comes in a I want a price tag. No, no, I mean it's it's price pointed. You know, the same as most erasers. Um, it's rechargeable, so it's a little bit more than like the Helix and stuff, but I think it's priced under the Sakura um, eraser. So, actually, Laura Glass just put up, Laura's from Iwata, she just put up the link to where you can go and you can see where you can buy it. Um, I'm not sure of the pricing on it. So, 
See, I'm just kind of roughing in this stuff, and that's helping out with some dark details and some placement. You know, and this is what we talk about in my workshops and classes. Proper ways to use stencils versus, you know, just flooding a bunch of paint in. A lot of people grab a stencil in the beginning because you don't know when you first start. And you know, people grab a stencil and they'll just they'll do this. And you'll get this big, harsh shape that you can't do anything with because it's already too dark. So like when I do my skull templates, uh, let me grab one here, one of my pack of skulls. You know, most people will take this and they'll like, you'll flood the eyes in. Well, now you're stuck. It's already 100%. What the right way to do it, you know, the way I teach it, and we go over the classes, and even uh, my class will be going through these as well. If you start soft, remember this rule of airbrushing you can always add more paint, it sucks to take it away. So, see, it's light. Now I can go in here and I can just start darkening the upper areas of the eye and the nose, and it's kind of set up. See how much better that already looks? It already looks like it has depth. Then you come in for freehand. And do little things like that. Eye sockets and shading. But I can't do any of that with this because it's already too dark. So, you know, it's just a different way to do it. So, what I did with this cut file, you know, you know, if I was plotting, it'd be a cut file, so I sometimes say that. That's where some of the harsher lines are. I know there's going to be a separation here. There's going to be another separation here. And I just do this at the beginning, and if you watch from my feed, you know, I'll start with a stencil or mask, and it's just it's just enough to get my bearings. It's not to um, you know rely on the stencil to make the artwork. If you're relying on just a stencil to make the artwork, you're gonna have a much harder time making it look not stenciled. And the key to stencils is to aid you, not to do it for you. You know, even uh, what's the what's the company that Steve just used? Uh, HD stencils. I haven't messed with their stuff yet, but like their stuff is great because you get like this dot matrix print, laser cut, and you blow it in there. All your major shape and shading is there, and yeah, you could leave it at that, but it, I wouldn't. If you watch Steve paint, you'll notice it was enough to set everything up. So now you freehand everything. You know where all your major darks and lights are. So now this is cool where I can kind of come in and start. Actually, I did this one backwards. This should have been white, and I should have went darker on the other side. Easy fix. It looks almost like, on the camera, it looks like it's an albino crow at the moment. Yeah, it does look like an albino crow. It's a white crow with a red eye. That's a... That would be cool. That's really cool. I'm going to work that back out. Back to my black. This is why multiple airbrushes are fun to have. And now I'm going to go the way I should have went. Instead of here, I'm going to go this way. And darken that side. That's what should have been done. I'm going to zoom out that top cam a little bit. If someone wants a quick recap. Um, we're, draw we're, we're painting a crow. Cool. So, James, what we did is, if you saw earlier today, um, it's going to be a crow image. This is going to be the reference image I did uh, that I went from. <coughs> I got a graphic here I designed. It's going to be overlaid. So that was mass first over a gray panel. So, yeah. So that's what's happening, if that clarifies what we're doing. Like Green said, a wise man once said, a stencil, is a, a stencil is a road map, but you still have to drive the car. Yeah, that's really good, man. It's, that's true. You know, and I've always heard, oh, use a stencil. Oh, use a stencil. Are you trying to sound like because I used a stencil, I can't paint? I'm being smart with how I use my time. 
by getting the registration done first so when the painting part is more enjoyable and comes out better. Work smarter, not harder. Yeah, work smarter, not harder. Exactly. So, but now, once it's done, now I can freehand and start kind of getting here. And you could go and do a ton of detail inside the mouth. I'm just going to kind of go in and do most of the registration. I got to look at my photo. I mean, the photo, it's pretty much black. There's, there's a little bit of stuff down here you can see, but. Uh, Gary said I like the mouth is indistinct. The inside of a crow's mouth is an ugly thing. How do you know what the inside of a crow's mouth looks like? Don't ask that. <laughs> That's my main question. Do, do you look up? I'm sure you can look up the inside of a crow's mouth online and you will find find it. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> See there's little feathers in here. Probably curl around the mouth. I'm just kind of getting that stuff in here now. And I'm really to set up that white. So Kaylee just looked up the inside of a crow's, it's crow's not mouth. That's the worst I've seen. It looks just like a bird mouth, but it looks like it has weird teeth in the back of its throat. It's not as bad as the goose, so that's good. Yeah, that's good. I don't think anything can be worse than what a goose mouth looks like. Yeah, goose mouths are a little bit gross. And they're so gross. But see, now that everything's there, I can really just freehand and have fun with oh, it. Oh, Gary's raised a couple of crows. Oh, very cool. I didn't know that, that Gary. That's really cool. The crows are pretty sociable, apparently. That's what I've heard. A cool one for a pet. They're loud, though. I bet they're loud. Because most of the, most of the colonies here are from a, from a few miles away. So imagine not waking you up in the morning. Yeah, so, see, I mean, this is, again, it's, it's going to be pretty bright right now, and then I'll carve in that, that detail. You're kind of setting it up so you can knock it back. Just setting it up. Because in order to get the rest of the crow in, you got to get this white in there, or enough of it, so I can push those darks back one time without, like, spending hours going back and forth and back and forth. And see how you can still see the blocking in here? We've got to get rid of that, you know. And that'll go away as you keep working with it. Oops. I'm gonna put a little white up in here. And then I'm gonna put it in. Ravens are dumpster chickens. Ravens? Who said ravens are dumpster chickens? <laughs> dumpster chickens. That's smart good. Smart as hell, but nasty. I mean. Pigs are smart as hell, too, when they're nasty. Alright, so. I think, I'm pretty sure ravens are a lot meaner than crows. Probably. So I'm going to make this red a little brighter, I put a little white up there. And for this red, I'm using the scarlet red. So I'm using it almost like a candy because it'll bounce, it'll be brighter. 
than the opaque grid, but the opaque grid's already down, so it'll cover better. See that? How much brighter that just popped it? Same thing, we'll give them the eyes a little brighter. Yep. Tasty! <laughs> oh, I'm talking about pigs! Pigs are tasty. Love bacon. I thought you were talking about raisins. Um. Don't tell me pigs are very clean. They actually are. I, I know I, they're very clean, but they're also very messy. They roll around mud. I spent time on a farm when I was a kid. So the other cool thing about this eraser, I'll go back to that quick, is it has a cap. So don't lose it. And it saves on the back, which covers your charging port so you don't spill paint or do anything in your charging port. You know, standard USB, um, mini USB. All right. Yes, pigs are also very mean. Animal Farm proves that. So now this is where I'll start going in. And this is regular illustration black. You know what I might do? I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna get a little bit purple. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red violet. I'm gonna add a touch of that into this. And make the color less pure black and have just a little cast of purple to it. So I'm going to ask you, what are the po pocket graphics? Ah, the pocket graphics, which I will use shortly. Let's get the purple flow and see this. So now that's got a little bit of a warmer hit to it. Might be a little too much, but we'll let it mix for a little bit and see where it ends up. And let's see how that ends up there. Yeah, I think I'll add a little bit more black back in. I'll let it sit for a second. Pod graphics, which I will use at some point for the feathers. This is my uh, pocket stencil set, which came out. We brought it back in the market last year. It is six templates for all different effects. So this is a rip and tear. This is the pyro, which is great for doing fire and stuff. We'll show you how we can use that. Rivet Master for doing positive negative rivets and metal edges and little torn edges. Filigree Flourish, which is all the, you know, the four major types of filigree. Different curls, different loops. Uh, on the Iwata uh, YouTube channel, there's a whole how to, just two how-to videos. Use it. This is a Shatter, which is like broken glass. And this is Metal Master, which has like nuts and bolts and holes and kind of rivet lines and smoky edge things like that so cool set uh there is a youtube not youtube there i do have a facebook channel for it there's a pocket graphics one there and these are done through iwata uh, art tool so any place that sells iwata will carry these so i'm just gonna leave that up here for now they'll bring them out that's much better. So see, that's what I want. It's that black, but when you go soft, it's got kind of a purple tinge to it. And when you go all the way in, it's pretty much straight black. Okay, that's what I wanted to get out of it. And I'll end up over reducing it again at some point. Now the other thing is these guys have eyelids, so I'm gonna put the eyelids in. I'll smoke them out a little bit.
reduce it more. So I really want this to be super soft. stuff in the color changing paint black to purple would work the chameleon no i wouldn't want that that'll kill this it look good for a graphic but that stuff is so strong that you know you don't want to freehand with that um you can kind of mess with it um if you kiss it over a little bit maybe and then did all your detail work over it so it kind of went away you might be able to get away with it but that stuff can be super overpowering especially once you like clear it you yeah, know this is really you know, the one thing about doing birds is, you know, the time it takes to, you know, make everything look subtle and not too much line work. So what I found is you, try, you, I, you get a few areas, you know, detail lines. And then kind of soften and push it back. I'm going to switch to this being bigger. So you can see it a little bit more. And we'll zoom out. But you can kind of see that purplish tinge up there. The pocket graphics. Thank you, Laura. The one of like the shop. Um, like Iwata. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so if you go to the Iwata page, that'll give you all the breakdown of the product, but it'll show you, you know, who carries it and where you can get them from. So yeah, it's just that nice subtle little feather lines. And you tone them back in. An old course bristle brush but shot but shoot through for hair fur feathers. Yep, you could do that. You could do uh, like fan brushes work great. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um you know, you could do even like the end of the erasers. You could, you could like flare them and do stuff like this. You know, it works. Uh, what I found a lot of times when I use, you know, those brushes is sometimes they're too repetitive. You know, this works too. You know, there's there's a million a million tricks to doing it. But in the feed we got here, yeah. This is a good good topic to talk about about price pointing stuff. How long are you gonna spend painting it? Do you have a two hour budget, a four hour budget, a ten hour budget? What's your budget for time? How much? How realistic do you want it to get? You know where are you trying to get with it? You know, what's your overall look? I mean, for yourself, for an art piece, it's different. You know, when you're working for a client, obviously you got to factor in time as money, and you know what that what that's going to look like. And you know, how many of these are you going to do? Are you going to do two thousand feathers by hand, or are you going to just black out a large area? Let me 
get around my eye. You know, and this might be one of those projects that doesn't get fully finished during the live feed. It has to be done after because it just might be longer than I expected it to be. We'll see. The one thing about doing like birds, especially or dogs or anything that's all black, is the clear really makes a difference in the end. You know, of what it overall looks like. So sometimes you really gotta wait till the very end to see how it looks. head out of the cam like hi yeah, your head. what's that your head was like in frame yeah in sorry You know, the other thing you can do is you can do razor blade slicing. Let's see if I can zoom in on the beak and how that would work. Yeah. So you can, for like the little lines in like a beak, you could sit there and just do subtle scraping. I'm not sure it's showing up. There you go. See that nice little. Yeah, you know, there were two crows uh, from a cartoon a long time ago. Uh, I mean, Heckle makes sense for the name for a crow, actually. Yeah. I was going to do. I don't think I do a crow again for a little bit. If I was to do another crow, I'd probably do the one from Secret of Nim. Was it Sebastian? Was it Sebastian was the uh, name of the crow? Which the voice was... It? Let me look it up. Oh, that would have been a cool question. To... Yeah, uh, Chris, so these are those uh, ceramic blades uh, by a company called Slice. These are really cool. Um, because A, they don't really cut through your hand or anything much. I mean, if you really try, you will. But um, they do a nice job because they don't go through all your material. Jeremy Crow. Jeremy. Uh, oh, it was Jeremy. Yeah, it was Jeremy. Yeah, it was Jeremy. Yeah, I liked him. He was yeah. funny. He Ooh, had bags under his eyes. Ooh, a sparkly. <laughs> yeah. And Don DeLuise's voice is unmistakably awesome. See, I'm just going in, doing the, the highlight. Owl. Yeah, the owl would be an awesome painting. I think Rod Fuchs did an amazing version of that at some point. Yeah, he was cool. Yeah, the owl was really cool. So, like, he has a good use of the pot graphics. So, I'm going to put a little bit of highlight on this edge of the eye. 
See that little bit? Just enough there. We're gonna do a little sharp on the outside. Or the old rat. And then I'm gonna go in, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna light this a little bit down like that. See, little bits. That's what these come in really handy for. I think this new camera works pretty good. What do you guys think? You're making the eyes look very watery. Yeah, that's what you want. That you know, that kind of wet look. But see, you know, at what a little while ago, I was not liking it because it was looked like it didn't have the contrast. It, but you need to build that contrast in slow to get it to where you want it. That's the thing about painting, you know, painting where it's semi-real or stylized realism. You got to give it time. If you're going for full realism, you got to give it more time. And if I was going to go by my photo reference, photo reference, you can see there's a lot of blue in it. So almost before I was into the, the blacks, I would, I would go in and do like a wash of that kind of blue tone here. I'm not going to do that for this piece. I'm just going to keep it a little simpler. Um... Because I just wanted to really pop off that red, and I said, then I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna probably red glow around this whole piece. Um, maybe I haven't decided how much I'm gonna glow or not. You know, if you want to go photorealism and stuff, you know, some of the classes we do at the Rendezvous, um, I'm not sure who's doing portrait. You know, see work from Corey St. Clair. Um, Marissa's classes are great. Uh, Drew Blair does amazing photorealism. His is more, you know, more hyperrealism, like super, you know, can't tell the difference between a photo. Uh, whereas other people, realism has um, a little bit more, you know, softer. You know, I don't want to say stylized realism, but just it's it, it's got more of an art approach to it than a realism approach. If that makes sense. So I ask, are you using the UVL? UVLS. Yeah, UVLS more than a 4030. I am now, yeah. Um, I like it better because I'm more used to painting urethanes. Um, it will make the paint dry a little faster and harder. You have less erasability to it, um, more so than what the 4030 would do. But for me, I just love it because it acts more like what I'm used to, which is more of a urethane. Uh, and it's definitely you know, more durable. Side feed. Is there a particular reason you're using the side feed, and what size is it? There's no particular reason on the side feed other than this is a 0.18. The side feed natively comes like the two microns. These are the two the two microns. This is the CMC, uh, the custom micron C. I mean, not custom micron. It's the CMC, and this is the the SB. So this is a 0.23 needle and nozzle assembly. You have an optional 0.18. You can throw in these as well. This comes uh, traditionally as a 0.18, so this is finer. Uh, typically will come with this type of cup. Uh, this type of cup is open cup. I don't like it. Uh, they do make a lid for this taller version because the factory one's a little shorter. For me, I move really fast because of my t-shirt days, my automotive days. When I use this, I spill paint all over my piece. So I opted for this cap, which is more typical to what I'm used to, which is this, so I can move around and not spill paint everywhere. Um, but either or, I mean, the way this project is, I don't need this. I could just as well get away with um, an Eclipse or an HPCS, uh, or this is, these are kind of my two go-tos, workhorse ones, or my HPC Plus and the, the CH, which this is my custom color one. Uh, these are available at Coast Airbrush. These are the ones that have the, the Cerakoting. These I use more than anything. Uh, time to 
check. It's nine ten. It's nine ten. We gotta start moving. You know, if anyone is interested in this project, we will take bids. You know, bids would start at 150. At 150, I would let it go. So bids could start from there and go anywhere from there. Because honestly, if it doesn't go that, that much more, I that less than that. I'll just keep it for display. Start pushing that black detail. So yeah, when this is cleared, it's just gonna it's gonna be awesome. Where is I'm gonna take this here? This was a stencil I used earlier that I made. I'm just gonna pop this out. Someone asked if you need a cap for the other one. Which one? I don't know. You just said do you need a cap for the other one? No, you don't need one. They don't they they um these typically the one, there's one smaller that has no cap. This one has an optional cap. Um, but a lot of painters paint without a cap because they only put a teeny, teeny little bit of paint and they just paint little, little, little bits. So they don't paint with it. Um, some of the Microns or other versions just have a small little cup or not. There's a couple models. I forget which model. Uh, Laura, if you're still on, I'm not sure if they even still make them. There was a model that doesn't even really have a cup. It just, it just has a, a slot taken out of this, like where the cup would be. And you just put a drop or two of paint or ink in it um, and work really fine. So again, I mean, that's the way people want to work. See how that just popped that out? Now if I want to make that beak pop more, Give me a quick little cutting tutorial. AJ offered to make one. Oh, to make a cap? If you want, yeah. Yeah, well, they make caps for this one. I, I, they, I have the metal cap for this one. Just It's around here I somewhere. Think it might be like a custom cap. Cup, custom ones could be really cool. And then the smaller one does not have a cap because it wouldn't have anywhere to place to dock in because you'd hit the weld. Um, Let's see, it's gonna pull out that beak a little more. With my exacto knife. If I could find it in this mess. So I wanna punch out this, uh, here, let me um, move in front of the zoom cam. So I have this zoom cam. I wanna get really tight. And I'm just going to cut in this, and you'll see how I'm going to use that. Now, the other thing you can do... Oh, Kelly Ross is at 150. Mr. Ross, thank you, sir. It's time to pop out the sticky note pad. Yep. Now, you want to talk about someone who could do feathers. I should take a class from you on doing feathers. For those of you who don't know, Kelly Ross is probably one of the most accomplished decoy duck painters around. Um, some of the work he's done, the pictures are mind-blowing what he's done on it. So, I bet Kelly's got some neat tricks for doing feathers. Thank you, Kelly, for the bid. So I'm just gonna, I wanna get this. Oh, hello. I wanna get this to pop off more. So you'll see here. I can come right off the stencil like this way now. You know, when I do this and pull this, you'll see that mouth already has that lift.
you know what's cool about you know the realism or semi-realism stylized realism is it's a it's a it's a subtle way to work and you can work very slow and the re the reward doesn't come like super quick like t-shirts but at a certain point it goes from like not looking good or just looking like a jumbled mess to wow that looks cool like you start seeing the depth like right now I'm just starting to see that depth And a lot of times, painting like this, I would probably take a take a um, technique like what Rod Fuchs does is I probably get it about eighty percent done, clear coat it, look at it, sand it, and then go in for like a lot of little fine pick details and things like that. So I just keep washing black lines and just keep working it. It just starts to come together. Let me use this to kind of make that shoulder. yawning over there. She's getting tired. I've been tired all day. It's so much darker person, is it on camera? It's funny. Well, didn't you edit the exposures for them because you wanted it to match um, the GoPro Ye better? Yeah. So you need to fix that back to normal. So I'll mess with the exposures a little bit. I mean, this one, this this camera, I can actually do it manually. So let's see here. So that's actually right closer. There we go. To what it looks like in person. That's, yeah, that looks almost perfect. Yeah, this camera is a manual focus and adjust, so it's cool. Um, versus, you know, that one. Which we can zoom in on that a little bit more. But, yeah. So that's kind of more or less what it looks like in person, a lot darker. You know what's on the cool template to use? Let's see if I can find it. This is one by Drew Blair. This is called Micro Dots, which you can see there's, that's how fine they are. There's just tons of little dots in there. So this could be cool for doing some feathers. Uh, you can't even, can't even really see it on camera. So. I probably have to zoom in a lot to get that. Let's see if we can see it. The dots? Yeah, let's see. If we you can, can see it a little bit. Let's see if we can go over here and just. See what's just those little dots in there? And this, this used the same thing. You could move this too. It's very zoomed in. Yeah, it's very, it's too zoomed in. Just his face. That would, that could be a meme format in and of itself. Just the zoom kid screaming crow face. Hello, Kevin McCauley. 
Thanks for joining. How's things up in Canada? Mr. Primo, how you doing, Rick? Yeah, the feeds are tough to do, man. I mean, I did them for a while. I got off them for a while. Then I built this whole setup. Um, so, the you know, super clear feeds and sound. And, um, and I'm going to be doing more on my YouTube channel. Which I may rename the YouTube channel. I'm going to think about that. Yeah, my Thin Air Graphics channel. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely go over there. Oh, totally good. My daughter will supply the link. Yeah, like, it looks really blotchy right here, but man, in person, it's not. It's funny. Get this white back in. I'm gonna... I'm gonna great reduce this white. I gotta fade a little bit. I wanna get a little bit around here. Yeah, those eyes do look like they're glowing pretty well. And that's the key, you know, when you're doing animal portraits and stuff, what, what I've learned, especially if you remember amazing artist, uh, Yurik, Yurik's art, I mean, the, the, the art was amazing overall, no matter what part of it you looked at. But the way he did eyes was so unique, and they were signature style for him, like, he could have screwed up the rest of the painting to the point where it looked like trash, but those eyes are so perfect, you wouldn't even care. Not that he ever screwed up the paintings, but just saying that's how good they were. Talk, damn it. Kelly said the eyes show life. They do. That, 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 that's Kelly's pickup line. <laughs> the eyes show life. I remember Jurek. Yurik. Yeah. Yurik? Yep, yeah, Yurik. That's how it's pronounced. Well, there should be a little two little dots over the U. Well, yes. Uh, but it's... But it's Yurik. Amazing painter. Uh, he was from here. Really? Not from here, but his studio used to be down um, in Provincetown, down the Cape. Ah, uh, I love back down there. Now he's in Arizona. Not really, actually. Uh, I want to go to the Cape, but yeah, actually, you never been to Provincetown. Provincetown is a, it's a cool place. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been. Or it's been a really long time since I've been.
getting there, getting there. Slowly but surely. What time are we at, kid? Uh, 9.34. 9.34. Yeah, we'll be able to get this done enough where we can pull the mask. See if we can do the scratching would work. Let's see if the racing still works at this point. I don't know if it will. Yeah, it does. Which goes down to that gray color. Yeah, I gotta give you a red glow around all this very shortly. So I'm gonna get this pretty black under here. Then I have a question for me. How did you get the paper to like feather like that? Did you cut it? Oh. That's a cool little trick to show. So what Kaylee asked was how I got the paper shredded. So if you look at it, it's not a smooth edge. Really simple to do. Come in here, knife, blade, zoom in. So as opposed to, you know, normally you would just like, you know, cut the edge like this and work it. This kills your blade, so you use like an already semi-used blade, and you just do this, just pick it. Ah, oh, okay. That's just, kinda what I thought. It takes a little bit to do. Yeah, you know, then you just pull it apart. And then you get that nice little, yeah, uh, where is it here? That nice little sh kind of shattered edge. Now, oh, speaking of edges, so for feathers, here's a cool little trick you can do with the pocket graphics, especially the uh, the floral one, the flourish. You can go in and like use them for feathers. Work really cool. All sorts of little tricks you can do. Or just freehand. I'm not trying to do a, a bunch of feathers here. Just kind of look like there's something happening. Uh, let's zoom back out. Still pretty bright down here. I'm going to tone into here way, way down. Just push it. Just softly push it back and then we'll carve some more. feathers in. Like I said, products like this, how many hours of feathers do you want to paint? Because you can go on forever. This is where sometimes brush work is nice. Come in here with a little detail brush, a little white, and you can just highlight some feathers and then push them back. Works really good. Oh, 
back some black this time on the edges. And now red fade back up into those. All right, let's see. I'm gonna take a big risk here and see if I like what I'm about to do with the red. So red glow, a little more texture. Uh, now what I want to do is I do want to kind of, yeah, I want to push this red back actually a little bit. A little bit more, tone it back on the edges. Blow a little bit of texture back in here. And there's a reason I'm doing this. Because I'm going to do a red glow around all this. So I want it to show up. I could ruin this whole thing at this point. Just be forewarned. It's always a risk for it. No risk, no reward, right? Our, my art teacher is obsessed with us taking insane risks and ruining our art. Sometimes you gotta get close to ruin it before it's awesome. So I'm gonna reduce this paint more. Get it flowing good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around all these freehand and do a red glow. I'm going to paint on the stencil. I look super red right now, but we're gonna lose some of it. It might have been cooler to just do a white glow around it, which I may consider because I'm not sure I'm going to like this. But then again, it might look really cool. So we'll just see. We'll just see how it looks. And if Kelly hates it, he can retract his bid. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to push it back a little bit so it's not so pinky. Remember what I said, as long as we get the eyes right, everything looks good, I can mess the whole thing up. And as long as the eyes look right, we're good. Uh, I am going to do one more glow. Just bring in here. I want... And up here, you know, I want to use a more opaque. Out oh, here. When this is clear, this is going to pop so much more. I 
that brighter. Let that eye bright. Look at that eye is like glowing red. I think you know, I really think it does need more red down below. Just might, just might work. That's everyone's thing. Go for it. You never retract your bid, Kelly? <laughs> nope. No one's no one's touched it. If you are new and you just have just don't know the highest bid is 150. From Kelly Ross. So you can dethrone Kelly Ross by bidding higher. You'll take red to be a little bit better. The key is to paint right on the mask. Just let the overspray cast over. Razor blade. Let's pull them off and see. Let's see if we like it. That one's a little dull. Going here. Cool. I kind of dig it so far. Gary says his wife is holding out for a dragonfly. We should do that sometime soon. Dragonfly could be cool. I might do a dragonfly. You can do a hand with a dragonfly on it. Yeah, I gotta be able to paint it in two hours, kid. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> an anglerfish. Ooh. Oh, I love it. Oh, angler. I got some good photo reference of an anglerfish. Let's do it. Anglerfish are who, awesome. Who said anglerfish? Shane. Shane? Shane, you might have just won next week's. Automatically. No, you didn't win the panel, just the pick. That's what I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, I like I like that red glow. That looks cool. When it's clear, it's going to look even cooler. I'm going to tone it in. I did a mask for one on my iPad, just haven't painted it yet. I'm going to tone it in a little bit. Go off the page. Tone that red down. Have you ever done a dolphin? Have I ever done a dolphin? Yeah, on. Not on t-shirts. Yeah. Oh yeah, was it in that ocean bike? The, the, well, no, the the red memorial bike I did a few last year uh, for James Blow, the one with oh, the, with yeah, yeah. The, the kids passing that had him kissing the dolphin. Oh yeah. And then it had dolphins swimming down the side of the tank. It's true. I'm trying to think something you've never painted that you could do for a screen. 
Anglerfish? I don't think you know. I don't think I've ever painted one. I've always wanted to. But yeah, you've painted lots of cuttlefish. And a few cuttlefish. Uh, you don't do snakes that often. No, I don't do snakes that often. And feeds, they just, you know, it's almost like the problem with doing this one is it's so much time in like just little mundane feather work. Stick bug. You do a stick bug. We were talking about stick bugs earlier in the car. We were. Um, or like an orchid mantis. If you don't know what that is, that would be cool. The car. And so this is like the fun part of the project. So, for all intents and purposes, it's done. Ooh, scorpion. Someone mentioned. It. Scorpion could be cool. You know, this is done for the most part. Now I can just put in as much little time as I want, just refining feather details, brightening up highlights, picking, you know, just just working a, a little bit. You know, this is the funnest part of the project, is when you're at this stage, because anything you do improves it. Unless you, like, spill paint on it, then that doesn't improve it. That ruins it. It's happened. It could happen now. So now I'm going to go in and do these final little highlights. We're going to get the, the... Brighten up the beak. So guys, don't forget to go over to my YouTube channel and check out that stuff. I am taking all these feeds. I'm going to edit them down. Some will be edited down to maybe just time lapse and put on YouTube. Um, some I might add some extra graphics into it and stuff. Uh, informational things and maybe um, some other prep and how I did certain things. So make sure you get over to YouTube and subscribe and watch some of the videos. Watch my how-tos. Uh, watch them a few times. Watching them helps me. Because the more views, the more I'm able to do with YouTube. Just works, makes it better and better. You know what? Maybe I'll do a little bit of this. Black Emperor Scorpion will be cool, possibly some like Yeah, so UV glow paint would be cool with black light. I can talk to cre Createx about that. And, yeah. You know. Awesome. Dude, we should do a UV glow light and I'll paint an Elvis on a black canvas. An Elvis? Yeah. Like an old velvet painting. Like Elvis the... Singer. The singer. <laughs> okay. You know another Elvis? No, but I thought you might. I don't know. Or you could do, um... Like one of those like Dino Muertos makeups that they do that people draw, do like not make the makeup like people do drawings for Dino yep. Muertos where it's like a someone with a skull glowing face paint. Yep, that could be cool. Actually, gonna be doing a bike, a Day of the Dead bike, soon. Ooh, oh, who's, what's the girl? What's like the patron lady's name? Pam. <laughs> Pam, the patron saint of 
Non-stick cooking surfaces. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Was it Katrina? Katrina, yeah. Cool. Cool. Q, Q, Q. Yes, a long time ago. Um, Shane asked, what about a stone gargoyle? Ooh, that could be fun, too. Go write these, write these down. List. <laughs> List, kid. List. Okay. Earn your keep. So, anglerfish has got to be in a feed. Maybe on a Lumilor panel could be fun. Emperor scorpion. Emperor scorpion. UV reactive would be fun. Um... What did we just say before that? Someone said a snake. Snake could be go. Oh, stone gargoyle. Stone gargoyle would be really fun. I could, I could, I could dive into that. <clears throat> yeah, I can't wait to see this thing cleared. It's gonna be sick. We could do an otter. Could do an otter. Kelly is going to bid 200 now. <laughs> Kelly's up in his own bid. Because Kelly is awesome. I am really happy with how this came out. This painting oh, is going to... This he has a, he scary has ferrets running around his house. Yeah, we can do ferrets and do Kodo and Kodo. I love ferrets. I want a ferret so bad. When she can take care of her fish daily, we can talk about other animals, but she can't do that, so. Try to call you out on camera. Okay, so. This is going to complete the Thursday night live feed. When this is cleared up, it's going to look really cool. I'll clear that. When I clear last week's feed with the rose, and we'll get these things sent out. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining, everyone for checking it out and staying for the feed. And uh, yeah, all the suggestions for the next one. So we will do some more. I hope you liked this piece here. Let's go I Kelly. hope you liked this one. Yeah, there, this one. There it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a piece. Um, next time we'll figure out some other pieces. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for the piece, uh, for, for bidding. And thank you for checking it out. Thank you for everyone who helps make this. Thank you to Kid. That's Kaylee. I have and an otter. She's got the otter. The honor of having the otter. The otter. And uh, we will see you guys. Yes, Beastmaster reference. That's right. Um, I will see you guys next Thursday. So enjoy the rest of your week. Hope you have a great weekend. And Scott Voss, thank you very much. And uh, we will see you all next time. See ya.